we are running late on indian stretchable time uh, courtesy of our european colleagues and uh, i have to talk on uh, how can we adopt the global diabetes recommendations for india i'm thankful to the scientific team and diabetes india for having that i'll probably quickly look at the latest ada esd guidelines and the latest ace guidelines and then of course rssd and i have to thank bridge um you know his team uh, the entire rssd team came out with the rssd guidelines uh, and then of course we need to have indian solutions and indian adaptation uh, we are looking at remission and some take home messages so on september 23rd at stockholm uh, dr boos and dr melini divis uh, uh, really came out with the ada esd consensus document and their goals were very clear Uh, in their guidance which are recommendations for type 2 diabetes so i'm restricting only to type 2 diabetes prevent complications and optimize quality of life and they had a quadrant in that guidance glucose centricity is abandoned to a great extent but is still at the center of universe for sugar management its cardio vascular risk factor management cardio renal protection and weight management so those were the overarching features but i think the central dogma of their guidance has been putting person in diabetes at the center of care and their clear cut algorithm was to have the phenotype assessment specific factors on the choice of treatments a shared decision making approach agreeing for management path you know with a shared approach and then implementing it monitoring it and reviewing it so that was really the goal of that care and that whole decision tree was uh, alluded by them and these are their slides which are available they really were very mindful of clinical inertia we all are physicians taking care of people living with diabetes so inertia found and mention and then obviously review and agreement of pan found and mention weight was at the center stage so whether it was lifestyle and structured weight management programs including some very aggressive uh, you know restricted calorie diets uh, getting some evidence base from uh, remission data from the direct trial and dr wasim uh, did talk in his morning talk about that from the uk um, group which came out and then metabolic surgery and medications for weight loss so that's really the been the thing one compelling fact which came out from the guidance which we can adopt in india and i am very happy that professor mishra is in the audience because he was a part of the team and spearheaded and mentored many of us to look at some indian guidance on physical activity nutrition it was very very specific to it and the five ss they have put out are really remarkable and i think they need more attention than all the pharmaceutical compounds put in the sitting is the next smoking so you need to you know break the monotony uh, stepping uh, sweating strengthening and it's all about muscle strength it's all about muscle building particularly which is very very indian in its dna and adequate sleep so clearly you need to break prolonged sitting and uh, the generated evidence base in that guidance which we can adapt to india is limit sitting and try to break prolonged sitting every 30 minutes and a short slow walk or a resistant exercise can improve glucose metabolism so that's a very simple statement needs a lot of highlighting can be easily adapted here because we know sitting is the next smoking so it's some it's something very recognizable and we are all sedentary and covid made us more sedentary sweating it out is very very clear cut but we mindful of sarcopenia the frailty phenotype but doing the moderate intensity exercise and getting out and i i would appeal to dr mishra that we need to now relook at indian guidance again coming up with some indian evidence simple 10000 steps may not be the right dogma like may may just do 6 7000 steps we really don't know how many steps we need to do in india but even if you increase 500 steps per day the generated data and evidence base suggests that there is a 2 to 9% decrease cardiovascular morbidity and all cause mortality so that data piece needs to be generated here and even if you do 5 to 6 minutes of brisk walk it's equal to 4 years of greater life expectancy so you're adding actually 4 years to your life by just a 5 to 6 minutes brisk walk so i think these are simple tips which are easily implementable in 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 our scenario in indian scenario because they don't cost anything and the most important thing is strengthening i think it's very very important and i remember uh, professor mishra's paper long time back in diabetes care 
on the resistance exercise because any activity that uses person's own body weight or works against resistance improves insulin sensitivity glucose levels and they have also incorporated for the first time in the guidance some elegant piece of work done from india by various domain authors on yoga as well as tai chi so in the flexibility and balance piece you do find a mention in that and that's very the first time i'm seeing in a esd ada guideline mention of yoga mention of tai chi which is i think based on some pieces of evidence generated and then sleep again has got center stage we know the chronotypes you know we need to sleep more than 6 hours 7 hours is probably optimal is what professor ivan cuter and her group feels from uc chicago is the world lady on sleep medicine but not more than 8 hours irregular sleep is really disruptive to the glucose metabolism and having an evening chronotype which is very typical of indoor like the sarafas and the lifestyles which you see is not really helpful but it's probably attending the 230s 330 bhasma aarti at at ujjain mahakal might be more relevant and that's why they make a recommendation there that evening chronotype is not recommended and having a morning chronotype might be more useful but of course this needs evidence based generation in our in situation and scenario metformin is still there a lot of people think that metformin has been removed from the guidance it's very much there and they have put this small little piece including the cost effectiveness so i think don't abandon metformin uh, a message which came out when this guidance came out is so much of industry and i don't have any conflict of interest for this talk my only conflict of interest is uh, dr sabu is a good friend of mine and he just told me you need to put a rational piece to this so metformin is very much in the guidance and guidance doesn't say that you have to use a sgl2 inhibitor or glp1 analog so please be very very mindful of it metformin is still the center stage you know it's still it's got still some compelling impact beyond glucose space cytotoxins have not been thrown out they're still there but they have huge limitations now it's they're gradually weaning off uh, with the generic and the affordability and access of sgl2 inhibitors probably you will see some attrition of sgl2 inhibitors coming in uh, uh, Liptins coming in in the generic space, you will see sulfonylureas still have challenges related to hypoglycemia, weight gain, and so on and so forth. But they have heterogeneity, and we have data from trials, particularly from the Nagliptin trial and the Mepara trial, that there is no difference in the MACE events. So nearly that whole myth that they are cardiotoxic, etc., is all crap and humbug. And they are very much in the guidance. Glitosones are very much there, but they have challenges. They unmask latent cardiac failure. They they have uh, issues related to Uh, you know macular edema uh, fractures but they have very compelling drug for insulin they have some compelling data on nash so they still find the durability impact and we are a insulin resistant population so again they are not out so i'm just putting out this that this guidance very much recognizes these these drugs so we don't cliptins are very much there uh, so are sgl2 inhibitors and so are the glp1 receptor agents and insulin is uh, not out at 102 world's longest living anti diabetic drug very much a part of of the combinations and combining has become the order of the day probably this is one space again india was a little ahead of rest of the world because we combined early but we didn't generate sufficient and adequate evidence based piece on it and then of course we have these complex algorithms and i really don't want to get into this but again this was the quadrant glucose weight cardiovascular risk factor management and cardio renal protection cardio renal which is where this whole sglt2 and the uh, glp1 and the industry uh, push has been there i'm direct here okay uh, clearly is just a small piece in that whole guidance paper so so don't get carried away and it's a holistic patient centered approach which is actually the overarching philosophy behind the ada ast guidance so that's really the key and weight does find center stage a lifestyle does find center stage and what is another compelling feature in this is this patch or the five features on the cardiovascular risk factors two cardiovascular risk screening and and surveillance uh, you know you saw a very nice debate in the newspapers and anup is aware of that where between um, coronary ct is being done as preventive cardiology very nice debate but we can do simple cardiovascular risk screen blood pressure lowering lipid lowering anti thrombotic agents and smoking cessation and that's very much in the dna of this guidance so don't forget that of course there is this whole compelling cardio renal issue uh, there is this whole and i'm not going to dwell into that and other features which are there because there this complex algorithms i'm certain 
in the last three days, I saw the whole program. It's all over discussed, and it's I think you know people are almost uh, nauseatingly discussing it because every weekend there is some uh, industry sponsored event, and you can learn it from there. And I really don't want to take that. What is a very good slide kit is the concept of integrated care. And when people talk of integrated care, we should be happy because we are we we have our own ancient systems of medicine. I we saw Krishna giving a very elegant talk on ancient wisdom, and very clearly. It's a lifelong disease. We need to identify and coordinate with the team. It's a team approach. We need to use local resources. And language matters. I was talking to Dr. Vinay Garg. He's in the audience. He's from Ujjain. Uh, he was saying, Rashtra Bhasha ki jarurat hai. You know, so it's so important. And we saw that yesterday in the inaugural function. That language matters. It's there in the guidance. ADHD guidance. So I'm again telling you that they have been very mindful. But these pieces are missed out. Because we have so much got industry focus that industry only focuses on those slides and the clutter. But it's important to recognize it's a lifelong disease. It's a team approach. Use local resources and use the local language. If, if my friend from Bangalore and Arvinda gave a very nice talk, once in Kannada, it's, it should be in Kannada. If it's uh, Dr. Das is uh, fluent in Tamil and uh, French, I would not allow him to talk in French here in India. But certainly he can talk in Tamil. We are not against it. But it's important to recognize that language matters. And I think uh, our good friend uh, Parthakar pushes this language matters in a big way on Twitter. I can see Dr. Makkad and Dr. Basim uh, smiling. Individualization of the care is still, we are here for a person living with diabetes. And every human being with type 2 diabetes is very heterogeneous. And, and it's important that we contextualize it with the risks. Use the resources of healthcare systems and deliver evidence-based interventions in type 2 diabetes. And I am certain uh, Professor Mishra has always been telling us that Sashank generate evidence, which is Indian, uh, generate multicentric evidence, and, and, and that's really the uh, philosophy. Look at social determinants of health. It's equally important that India is a very rich country as well as a poor country. And look at the social determinants, have affordable, accessible medicine. And that's where, you know, our, our Prime Minister and, and teams uh, of Ayushman, Bharat, Jana Aushadi have made medicines available and affordable and then incorporate comorbidities. Comorbidities became very popular as a term uh, during the COVID times, but it's important to recognize comorbidities and they're all there in this guidance. We don't use these slides, so I thought it's important that we recognize these slides and we don't talk of it at all. And then ultimately, diabetes is all about self-management and education, education and education and everything which is local. You know, so so if, if, if there's a Sarafa culture here, you need to recognize that they can eat less in that and be mindful and have healthy options available. So, you know, I, I was very happy to see yesterday uh, Jamun shots being uh, having and I'm happy that Amit is in the audience and he was giving me Jamun shots and I never knew what was a Jamun shot. I thought he was going to give me an alcohol shot. But we need to do, generate some high science, uh, Amit, on, on Jamun. And Dr. Makkad, I shared my shot with Dr. Makkad, which was the Jamun shot. It's important that we do some science in that. It's important that we recognize science. Health behavior was an important tenet of that guidance. So pick up what is good from the West. Don't decry the West and adapt it to India. My message here is, it's all there about healthcare behavior, health-seeking behavior. We have got into a rebellious, revengeful mode, you know, after COVID. And everybody wants to do that. But it's important to pick up the good things and put a context which is probably local, regional or Indian, and use that and, and do, you know, the data, the weight tracking, physical activity and reinforce measures. So it's important to recognize that. And that's all there. And then, of course, glucose medicines are important. I don't want to get there on the GLP-1 and the agile 2s and the glitter zones of the world. And insulin still has a place. Please don't forget insulin. You know, nowadays, the way these conferences are held and my good friend Manoj put up a very nice program and a put these in the audience. Don't forget that Insulin is still alive, it's alive. Don't look at it, don't look at it. People have left it for insulin. You know, insulin has really got lost its center space and that's not fair. There is a place for insulin. You know, the 10-10-10 formula, you need to break the inertia. We need to initiate insulin with 10 units of simple glargine, 10 p.m., get a 110 sugar next day morning and, and get that A1C below 7. I think insulin is still important. We have just completely abandoned it. That's not right. And ultimately, this is a beautiful slide again from that same guidance to adapt local regionally, make it work. Make it work. You put a lot of efforts. 
ACE is the comprehensive guidance. So that's a recommendation. We need to recognize the difference between recommendation and a guidance. ACE is a comprehensive document. Each part of the document, I would urge you to read the 2022 guidance. And it's again talking the same thing. Glucose lowering, avoidance of hypoglycemia weight gain, reduction of cardiorenal risk. And you know, they're, they're, again, they have been a little more aggressive. One thing which misses out in the ADHD guidelines are the uh, alpha glucotriazide inhibitors. And, and ACE still includes them because, you know, some of the Indian situations need it. I don't want to go into details. They have a very nice dyslipidemia algorithm, triglyceride algorithm, neuropathy algorithm. But we are different. We are the G20 leaders today. Uh, you know, we are very proud. You know, Indians are unique. We have diverse clusters. Clusters is an is a, is a, is a investigational thing in India. We have different manifestations. We have cost as an issue. We have complications as presentations. We have access and adherence. So we are different. Clearly, we recognize that fact. And we need to make things different. We have cardiometabolic issues. We need to change our obesity terminologies. We, we definitely look at a holistic approach, which is patient-centric. So therefore, when we look at these, you know, we have the IDF algorithm, we have the ACE algorithm, and we have the RSHD wheel. And Dr. Makkad's uh, thunder, I'm not going to steal. He did loan out a couple of slides to me. And I, I, by brevity of time, I'm going to skip them because otherwise the symposium will go endlessly upon. But, but that wheel... Is, is crucial. And what are we trying to do? Reduce pill burden, lifestyle, reduce complications, progression, cost, and comorbidity. So simplifying management of diabetes should be easy. Glucose, hypoglycemia, weight management, comorbidity care, and adherence. That's very simple. But in India, we see a huge spectrum. We see malnourished people, lean people, thin built with central obesity, normal weight, normal built, overweight, obese, and morbidly obese. So we see all the seven spectrums. And you can see Dr. Mishra's slide photograph going up here because he, long time back, recognized under the auspices of Diabetes India and published this data with the help of Dr. Satish Garg. And I remember Bansi was the, and Dr. Mishra picked up in one of these diabetes uh, uh, India meetings in Chennai, if I'm not mistaken, Professor Mishra. He says that international guidelines, when, where they are not suitable for India, Lean and non-obese diabetic patients, particularly if you are coming from hilly regions and your BMI is below 19. And this is a very nice piece of paper. I happen to be also one of the authors on that, but it's basically Professor Mishra's baby. And this, he recognized it when that old ADHD algorithm was there. And it's still very relevant and applicable. But if you have a lean non-obese patient, particularly with a BMI below 19, a technically the global guidance may not work and we need to generate it. And in that, his piece is, and I picked up that piece at verbatim because it's very evidence-based, uh, one-third or 20% of patients have a BMI below 25. 10 to 20% are in the non-obese range. 5% have a BMI below 19 from rural or hilly areas. However, people who have BMI between 25 may have abdominal fat and insulin resistance, and metformin may still be apt for all these population which is non-obese technically except the lean ones below 19 and 20. The second thing which is there important in the guidance and the third pharmaceutical piece I'm not touching is that we still see people like the sub-Saharan phenotype with ketosis prone. If there's infection, surgery, trauma, steroids. And one of the biggest features we see as physicians is people come to us, for example, they come to Jain, to Dr. Jair, or come to Dr. Manoria or Dr. Agarwal. Uh, in Ahmedabad or Sunil Gupta in um, Nagpur. And then they go to somebody else. I saw photographs of Baba being put out here, some Baba or something, and then they stop medicines. And then they come to us in ketosis. And that's so common now to see. So that's something which we need to recognize. And therefore, ketosis can still be present, and we need to recognize it. And that's why this piece was put out. And then also there was a recognition of the alpha glucosidase inhibitors, which the global guidance forgot. RSS there came out with a very nice wheel. It has put out this wheel. For brevity of time, I'm not going to discuss this wheel. You can, we can really go. But the key feature is one side doesn't fit all. And I'm going to take five more minutes. Uh, I've got a, a minute and a half left, but I'm going to take five more minutes. Technology has entered our space. And artificial intelligence have entered our space. And we need to generate and use AI, coaches and doctors, and generate some evidence. This is some evidence we are trying to do in remission space and generate some high science in that space. And from the ICMR data, our good friend Dr. Mohan published this, and we are all authors on that. 
just by shifting the carb and the protein ratio, you can actually reverse diabetes. Cut the carb and add the protein. And I think Dr. Mishra has been saying this for the last two decades. So I think you can actually look at remission as an option and you can use technology more efficiently. So digital diabetes care has arrived. You know, and uh, you know we have a whole technology meeting coming up. Amit is putting out a beautiful meeting in New Delhi coming up. But I think we also need to do digital detox. And though my talk is on recommendations, we still need to eat less. We need to eat slowly. We need to eat on time. Have a large breakfast. You know, do some physical activity and yoga. Sleep well and smile. And clearly, we need to look at health and happiness. But I think I'll stop here. I think I'm on time. I can see the zero there. And I'm grateful to all of you all for allowing me to speak on this topic. Uh, I had a lot of slides on, on, on RSSDI guidelines. But with this Indian stretchable times and Dr. Makar, I have to really thank him. He gave me all his slides kit. Uh, maybe for some other date, I'll keep that because they are very well structured and well evidence based and they've tried to put some Indian evidence based to it. So thank you for a patient hearing.